organizations transform themselves to be more focused on customers. In the healthcare world, of course, this has become a, a big issue. I spend actually a fair amount of time talking and working with healthcare, healthcare groups. And a, a part of that is um, understanding the customer experience and the pa or the patient experience, but the consumer experience, and building a brand around that. That one of the things about brand, companies or organizations that are very focused on customers and move from being very hierarchical and centralized to be, being very decentralized is they often create tremendous brands, valuable brands. And in this t world today, I, I hope to persuade you that brands are more important than ever. Um, 25 years ago, if you, know, if you wanted to buy a car, there were actual differences in quality and things and differences in the product matter tremendously. Today, in this more commoditized world, uh, one of the key differences, in fact, sometimes the only difference is brands. So shifting from this focus from being internally oriented, focused on the hierarchy in the organization, to really focused on consumers and creating a meaningful brand, which is, I like to describe as a, a meaningful solution to an important consumer problem, has enormous rewards. And, uh, I'd like to share some of those with you. First thing I'd like to do is persuade you that this is important for all organizations. Many people think branding is just done by consumer packaged goods companies and so forth, but the reality is all organizations have brands. It's your reputation with your, with your customers. And brands and being customer focused can, ha can have enormous benefits. And to illustrate that, let me just um, show you these four companies on the screen. These are four organizations that have built great brands, Starbucks, Intel, Apple, and Harley-Davidson, and have, as a result, performed extremely well uh, financially. And they're very, very customer-focused, but they've done it in their own unique uh, and very different way. So let me uh, illustrate how powerful this idea can be, because many times people say, well, branding's important, being customer-focused is important, transforming the culture is important, but how much does it really impact the bottom line? So I'd like you to consider these four companies. I'd like to play a little investment game with you. I'd like you to, to imagine we can magically rewind the clock to 1990, and you now have the opportunity to invest in the stock market, knowing everything you know today. The only restriction is you have to pick one of these four companies. So let me ask you, which would you pick? So I need a volunteer. What would you pick? And by the way, it's not a trick question. Uh, if you pick, chose any of these, Warren Buffett inv invested all your savings in in 1990, Warren Buffett would be very jealous. Envious, I should say. So which do you like most? Starbucks. Starbucks. Starbucks is a great choice. Amazing choice. Why do we like Starbucks so much? It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, well, thank you very much. The dem <laughs> Tim's demonstrating that here. Uh, they, are, they are everywhere, yes, Chicago especially. Uh, but let's think about why, by the way, why should Starbucks not be such an amazing performer? So how old is the coffee business? Do you have any idea? So we as humans have been consuming coffee for 1,500 years. It, it, by the way, for the first 500 years, we didn't realize you could make a beverage from it. So we simply ate coffee beans. So it took us 500 years to, make, to actually brew something. Uh, and the first thing we brewed was more like tea, kind of like coffee beans mashed up with water in it. Uh, but eventually, we, we got the process right, thanks, I guess, largely to the Italians. Uh, but. Um, so why should, why should this not be it's, it's a It's a commodity, basically. It's a 1,500-year-old commodity. And what also makes Starbucks surprising is if you do blind taste tests, Starbucks coffee versus Dunkin' Donuts and uh, McDonald's, how well does Starbucks do? Not that well. In the middle often. N rarely on top. So what do we love so much about Starbucks? The experience. The experience, right. Now, what is the experience? You go into a Starbucks, I'd like you to imagine you walk, you're walk. you a loyal customer here in the United States, you, you're on vacation in uh, China, you walk into the Starbucks in Shanghai or Mumbai, India. Uh, let me ask this question, are you able to get the drink the way you like it? Yes. So it's globally consistent. You may not speak the local language, but you can get your half fat, extra hot, low skim latte or whatever. Um, and if it doesn't turn out right, what happens? They'll make it again. And if it doesn't turn out the second time, they'll make it again. And when you leave the store, how do you feel about that experience? Great. And so, in fact, Starbucks can make us feel sometimes a little bit special. And so what makes this brand so amazing is if you ask people in Italy, how do you succeed in the coffee business, they have one answer for you, which is make better coffee, obviously. What Howard Schultz has discovered is, yes, you have to have coffee that we would consider to be above the bar, but after that, what, what really distinguishes Starbucks? 
It's the experience. It's making the consumer feel special. And that's what is, what is so amazing. That's what's produced this spectacular success. Now, what makes this more interesting is not just the success here in the United States. China is now the second largest market for Starbucks in the world. It was Canada. Now, why should Starbucks not be successful in China? They drink tea. So for how long, I like to ask, have they been drinking tea in China? This is a deep tradition, as long as anyone can remember. There's also a lot of lactose intolerance, and Starbucks beverages are very heavy on milk. And incomes are rising, but still lower than the United States. So what have they discovered? What they've discovered, if, if Starbucks can make you and I feel, you and me feel special here in Chicago or New York or London, and feel that we're in charge of the process when we go into the shop, how do you th valuable do you think that is to someone who lives in Beijing or Mumbai? Unbelievably valuable. So they've discovered that, yes, great coffee is the start, but, or better coffee, I should say, is the start, but having that wonderful experience is really what produces great success. Now, Starbucks is a great performer, but let me illustrate, um, give you some numbers to put this in concrete terms. So since 1990, just to be specific about this, the stock market, the S&P 500, has grown on average 7% a year for the last 25 years. Here's how these four companies have done in that, during that same time period. 